is the way that multiple desktop spaces are now integrated right into Mission Control. Just take my mouse up to the corner of the screen and a little space pops up. I click, I've just created a new space. And I can populate it by just dragging the windows I want to work with in that space, just like this. And I've set up a new desktop. It's really useful. I can swipe through the spaces, of course, here in, uh, in Mission Control, go over to my desktop, and if I want to then take even an entire app and all of its windows and create a new space for that, I can click on the preview icon, drag the whole pile to the corner, I've just created another space. And the spaces are just as easy to clean up as they were to create. I just click, they delete, and the fl windows fly right back to my original desktop space. So that is Mission Control. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. So you see how these new features now work seamlessly together to create an incredible experience in OS X, unlike anything we've had on a personal computer before. Next up, the Mac App Store. We launched the Mac App Store this past January, and users have found out that it is the best place to purchase and discover new software applications. Now, for years, there have been many software channels to buy PC software. And they all work kind of the same way. You hop in your car, you drive downtown, you buy a DVD if they happen to have it, you drive back home, you load it up, or you wait for it to come, mail order, well, no more. Well, now with the Mac App Store, you can get your software right from the comfort of your own home on your Mac. And in the last six months, something incredible has happened. In the last six months, the Mac App Store has now become the number one PC software channel for buying software. That's incredible. passing Best Buy and Walmart and Office Depot. And the developers that have gotten on board with the Mac App Store have seen some great success, too. For example, Autodesk. They brought their Sketchbook Pro application to it, and since they've put it on the Mac App Store, they've seen a million new users on the Mac. Ferro Interactive has brought a host of games, including Mini Ninjas. Hopefully you've all played it. Doubling of overall revenue since they brought it to the Mac App Store. And small, great developers, like Pixelmator, has brought their amazing new image editing application to the Mac App Store. They've seen a quadrupling of their revenue. In fact, they made a million dollars in their first 20 days. So the Mac App Store has been a big hit for large and small developers. So what's new in Lion? Well, first, it's built right in. You don't have to go and download it and get it and decide to use it. It's built in for every Mac user. And there's a lot of great features for you developers to take advantage of. Some of them you're used to from the iOS app store, like in-app purchases. You can now build those in. <laughs> Push notifications if you want to alert users about important information. You can make your applications more secure. There's a built-in sandboxing method now in the Mac app store. And for users, downloads will be even faster because you can get these updates as Delta updates. <laughs> so that's the Mac app store. It's a really important part of the whole experience of Lion, as you'll hear more about. Number five, a simple but powerful idea, Launchpad. Wouldn't it be great if no matter where you are in your system, if you want to get at an application and quickly launch it, you can with a simple gesture? Well, now you can. With Launchpad, you simply make a simple gesture, a pinch motion, and all your applications fly onto your screen. No matter where they are in your system, Launchpad knows where they are. You can have multiple pages of applications that you can organize any way you want. When you go and buy a new application on the Mac App Store, it downloads and installs right into your launch pad. And you can make it look however you'd like. You can rearrange your icons. You can create folders, just as we're used to from iOS. And now you can do that on your Mac as well. So that's Launchpad. Next, resume. Here's a simple idea. From the beginning with a computer, you've had to run applications. Sometimes you quit them. You go back, and you're back at the starting point. You, get, you, you, you have no more windows open, your documents aren't open, you usually have to pick a template. Why can't applications get you back to work quickly? Well, that's what Resume does. Now when you launch an application in Lion, it brings you right back to where you were when you quit. It remembers what documents you were open, it remembers the text that was selected in the document, it remembers where the palettes were and the windows and everything, just how you like it. And Resume doesn't work just on an application, it works system-wide. So the next time you have to shut down and restart your, your Mac for a reason, maybe you've installed some new software and it asks you to reboot, yet you like everything just the way it is, well, don't worry. 
to get the new login window. You log in, and Lion will bring you back to the work environment as you left it when you restarted. All your applications running, all those spaces you set up, all just the way you like it. So that's Resume. Number seven, autosave. From the beginning of using computers, we've all had to remember one really important fact. Save, save, save all your work as you're going. Whether it's file save or command S on a Mac, you better keep saving. Because the one time you might forget to save what you're doing, something goes wrong and what are you going to hear? You should have saved what you're doing. <laughs> well, why should you? Why can't the computer help you? Well, that's what Lion does. As you're creating a document, Lion can automatically save it in the background without you having to do anything, without you having to see anything. Your work is just being saved for you. This is a really powerful but simple thing, but, but as we got into it, we found there's more things we can do for you since we're auto-saving. So if you zoom in on the title bar of your documents, you'll see the name of your document is actually a menu now that you can tap on and take advantage of the power of auto-save. Now, for example, let's say you're doing work and you don't like the work you did and you're worried it got auto-saved over what you liked that you'd done previously. Well, now you can just select revert to last open and get back to where you were when you started. Or maybe you love the changes you've made, and they're exactly what you want. You don't want it to ever get auto-saved over it again, because it's perfect the way it is. You can just se select lock, and now your document's locked. It's like a template, and nothing can ever change it. You can even write from within the application, select duplicate, and create a second document, just like the first one that you can start working on another version. So you have the power of all of this right from the title bar of your window. So that's auto-save. Now, autosave gave us a great idea to go even further with the next feature, and that's called versions. So you're working on a document, you're entering the text, you're formatting, you're adding copy, you're adding graphics, and all along, autosave is saving your document. In fact, it's saving all these versions of your document as you're working. So we call that versions. It's automatic. You don't have to do anything. We'll do it for you with Lion. If you love something in a split second, you can, of course, take a manual snapshot if you want. And it's very efficient. We only store the difference between the versions. They're not whole new documents. And you don't have to worry, if you ever share your work with someone else, that they're going to get all that back work that you won't, don't want them to get. When you copy it off or you send it an email, we only send the current version. So how do you get it, take advantage of this power of autosave and versions? Well, again, go back to that menu on the top. And there's another choice there that you may have noticed. Browse all versions. You tap on it, and you get this beautiful new interface. It looks a lot like Time Machine. But rather than being about your whole system, it's about that one document you're working on. On the left is the current version. On the right, all the past versions. And you have a time scale on the right, just like Time Machine. You can scroll back through them. And they're all live. You can switch and make any one the current one. You can even cut and paste between them. So that's versions. What I'd like to do is ask Craig to come back up and give another demo showing how this all works together. Craig? Well, again. All right. Well, let's, let's start with Launchpad. You see it's an icon right here on my dock. I click, and I get an instant view of all of the applications on my system, no matter where they're installed. I can page through them really nicely with gestures. And when I want to launch, let's say like address book, it's just a single click to bring it up. Can also gesture with a four finger pinch to get in as well. So, of course, when I want to add things to my uh, launch pad, the best way to do that is with the Mac App Store. I'm going to launch it right here. You can see on the Mac App Store, we have great featured applications, top paid and free apps, categories. We have also all of your purchased apps. So then if you uh, buy another Mac or you buy on one Mac and you want to get the app on the other one, you can download them here at no additional charge. And of course, updates. With just a click, you can bring all the apps you have installed on your system from the App Store up to date. Well, now let's uh, try adding Twitter to our Mac. We're going to click here and go to the Twitter product page. And with a click, I can buy. The app actually lifts up out of the App Store and flies right into my launch pad, downloads, and is ready to use. From here, I can just click and position it wherever I want. I can move it maybe to the first page. And as you see, we have folders, like this productivity folder. It works great. If I want to create my own folder, just pick something up, drop it, and I've created a folder just like that in Launchpad. Next, I'd like to show you just how fantastic the Mac is now with Lion and working with documents. I'm going to open a document 
that uh, I've been working on here on the history of guitars. When I start editing a document, often I'll position my windows just the way I like them, like this, maybe open up some inspectors, position them the way I want them, and then I'll set down to editing. Now, this guitar, this uh, looks maybe a little bit too metal for my target audience, so I'll uh, delete that. Take, uh, take this, move it aside, maybe change the font here on this, uh, on this document. So I'm done with my edits for now, and I'm going to quit. And I want you to watch what happens when I quit. Absolutely nothing. I wasn't prompted to save. I didn't need to be because Lion was actually saving for me all along. But it wasn't just saving my document. It was saving exactly the state of how I was working. So now when I go back and launch pages again, you see it brings back all my inspectors just the way they were, brings back my window positioned where it was, and even has my text selection highlighted just as I left it. Perfect restore. But we're not just storing the latest version of the document. We're keeping a history of the document as it's edited. So if I want to go back, maybe I regret these edits, I want to get back to the previous version, I go right here and browse all versions. And I'm taken right into the star field where I get a view of my current version on the left and the history on the right. If I want this previous version to become current, I click restore, it picks up, flies on top, and becomes the current version of my document, and I'm restored. But you saw there was actually more history than that. I'll go back into the star field here. You can see I actually have a full timeline here. On the right, I can go back to the very beginning of this document when it was just a few paragraphs, or step forward as I was adding pages and so forth. But when I restore a document, you know, very often I don't want really the whole old version. I like mostly what my new document has become, but often I want to harvest maybe just an image or perhaps a particular slide and bring it into the current version. With versions, I can, because these two windows are actually live here. So if I have on my current version maybe a page that could really use an image to punch it up a little bit, and I go back to this past version, I see, oh, look, there's, there's a guitar that would be just perfect. Well, I can just select the guitar in the old version, copy it, and then paste it right into the latest version. And like that, I've created just the document I was looking for. And that's versions. Thanks. Thank you, Craig. Next, number nine. For as long as we've had computers, we've wanted to share documents. We have a new feature to help you do that and make it easier than ever. It's called AirDrop. You've got your computer, your friends got their computer, and trying to get documents between them has always been such a pain. In fact, the easiest way to do this that no one's done better than is good old sneaker net. Copy it off of one, walk over to your friend's computer, copy it back on. Well, Lion solves that with a new technology, AirDrop, that's a peer-to-peer Wi-Fi-based network. So how does it work? When you go into the Finder in Lion, you'll see on the sources on the left, a new choice called AirDrop. You tap it, you get a new display inside the Finder. What you see is yourself, center, bottom right there, and the people around you who are also running AirDrop at the same time. You see their pictures. If I want to drag a, a document over to Shauna's computer, I just drag the document on top of her picture, and it asks me, are you sure you want to send this? And I confirm I do. On Shauna's computer, because she's also now running AirDrop, she sees, pops up over my picture, I'm trying to send her a document, she confirms she wants to receive it, and it downloads right into her downloads folder. And that's it. That's what it takes to now wirelessly share files between Lion computers. So it's a peer-to-peer Wi-Fi-based network. There's nothing to set up. It's auto-discovery, auto-setup. We have confirmation on both ends, just to be safe. And your data is protected over the air because it's fully encrypted as it's transferred. So that's AirDrop. And that brings us to number 10. <laughs> number 10 is Mail, a completely new version of Mail and Lion. It's beautiful. The layout on it is incredible. It works in a window. It takes advantage of full screen. You can work in a two column, or if you want to have access to your mail sources, a three column view right there on the left. And you see that the design of it's really optimized around reading your mail. You have a beautiful full height message window. On the left, in the message list, you see snippets, like we're used to from iOS, now built into Mail. Across the top, you have a favorites bar, sort of like a browser does. Now in Mail, that can be favorite folders where you like to keep things and you want to get at quickly. Probably the most, one of the most powerful features is searching. 
with searching now, we have new search suggestions. So you start to type